you know, pole arms are awesome. I really like them. And Naginatas are no exception. What's also awesome is not having to spend a whole lot of money. But there is a difference between affordable and cheap. Cheap comes with some problems. So I'm going to tell you what I think about this particular Naginata. But first, a quick shout out to the sponsor that's helping out with today's video. Alliance Heroes of the Spire is a mobile RPG with high ratings on Google Play. Although I have a feeling that what many of you might be more interested in than the ratings is the fact that it's got big cleavage and jiggles. Also, Green Rocket Raccoon. Zealous Furry? Just in case you need to know more about the game, there are almost 400 unique heroes that can be combined in over 10,000 different ways in battles. And there's two game modes. You can either do battle against giant monsters, you know, old school RPG style, or you can fight against other players and PvP, including guild battles. And there's a special incentive other than cleavage and jiggles. Download Alliance through my link down below and you get a massive bonus of 50,000 gold and 50 gems. All right, so on to you now. All right, so this Naginata is made by Musashi. It's available for 90 US dollars at Cult of Athena. And, um, well, the price tag made me a little skeptical, even though I know that Musashi is known for producing pretty decent quality for a budget price. And uh, I've reviewed a sword made by Musashi not long ago. I'll post the link below in case you're interested. And, um, yeah, so pretty good price for sure. Uh, we've had the Hanwei Naginata a while ago, um, quite a number of years ago actually, and that one is over 500. And there were still some problems with it. It was kind of the Naginata because it had some nagging issues that detracted from its overall presentation and performance and everything. It was just a little bit loose and I didn't find that acceptable for the price range. This one here, I mean, you could say that you can't really go wrong, right? I mean, less than 100 bucks. I mean, that's awesome. Sure, it's definitely a good price. And the steel seems quite reasonable, too. It's 1060 high carbon steel, which is not terribly hard, but it's not extremely soft either. It's not like 1045 or anything. Uh, if you're wondering what that means, I've mentioned that before, it's um, the number designates the carbon content. So 1060 has 0.6% carbon, 1045 has 0.45, etc. That sort of thing. And um, a lot of swords and uh, other blades are made of 1075, 1095, so the higher carbon range. And um, so my main issue with this, okay, let's start at the beginning. First, when I got it, I apparently got the wrong blade. So the blade and the, the handle were mixed up and they didn't fit. So you can see also the way the, the holes were drilled in this blade, you can see in the picture here, that's a really weird alignment. And the one hole is almost off the edge. So that's a little sloppy. But this one here is better. You can see the bamboo pegs are actually centered and uh, this fits properly. Um, the, the handle is really strangely light. I don't know what kind of wood it is. It just has wood. It doesn't say which. And uh, it really feels extremely light. I'm constantly worried about this breaking. So far it hasn't. But the scabbard has. So I had this leaning against the wall and a gust of wind you know, made it slide off. And before I could rush over and catch it, it fell on the floor. So it was on concrete, but it was literally just from a standing position just falling like this and it already cracked. So, I mean, to be fair, that's just the scabbard. Hopefully it's made of different wood than this. It's also not very thick, but I mean, it shouldn't crack open just from falling over once, in my opinion. It's not that big of a deal. It's, I guess the worst thing is actually the fit because this is extremely loose. This is one of the loosest scabbards I've come across. It's, um, yeah, it moves a lot. This is the first blade I got, by the way. This is the one that didn't fit. And uh, Call of Athena sent me the replacement for free, which is nice. And um, so this one doesn't fit either. I was thinking at first, well, maybe the uh, scabbards got mixed up as well, but this one is even, even looser. This feels like you can 
shake it right off. So theoretically it should be held in place by this brass piece here. Slides over and yeah, it's, it's kind of holding it, but it's really quite a loose fit. And if you're wondering why the blade is so dirty, I've given up on it. The, there's something inside this scabbard, some kind of, I don't know if that's glue residue, that's what I'm assuming, some kind of white stuff that keeps getting on the blade. And it's just every time you, you pull it out of the scabbard, it's, it's all dirty again. So I've just stopped trying to keep up. It just, it'll stay dirty. The edge is quite good, very sharp as you would expect. So that goes all the way from this line to the edge is all one continuous grind. So uh, tapers very nicely, it's very smooth. It doesn't offer a lot of resistance as it goes through the target. So uh, in short, it cuts quite well. And of course it's got plenty of leverage from the long handle and thereby lots of power. So yeah, cutting with this, at least light targets is quite easy and definitely fun. I mean, as I said, I very much like pole arms and cutting with them is great, no doubt about it. However, I say light targets because it's got quite a flimsy feel overall, I have to say. One minor annoyance is these fittings here. These are made of iron, by the way, just like the tuba. And these fittings here seem to be held in place by spit or something. I don't know. The, the glue is just insufficient. I had to actually glue this myself because this piece kept sliding up and down all over the place and uh, it has a fitting at the, or did have this fitting at the base as well and that also fell off while cutting. So I don't know what they use but it just it doesn't stay on. So basically you can, you might as well, when you get this, just take them off and re-glue them right away because they will come off. And yeah, because of how light the handle feels, I was very hesitant to put any significant power into it. In fact, I didn't. It was all pretty light cutting because it just feels like this would split pretty quickly. And I've seen some reviews written by other people who said exactly that, that this is a problem. It just seems like this is, very, very thin wood. In fact, while I'm talking about it, looking at it, I'm noticing that there is actually a crack. The fit where the guard is is very good once you've forced it on there. So uh, this comes disassembled and you have to put it together yourself and uh, you need to put it on with a rubber mallet or something because it needs quite a bit of force to actually fit on there, which is of course a good thing. And uh, it's really required because the fit of the, the tang to the shaft is not very good. So if, if this is not perfectly uh, tight, then this will wiggle around. It just, it, it has a lot of space inside there to shift. So it's pretty important that this is firm and secure. They, the pegs are properly sized, so that's not a problem. So there's no looseness when you handle it. This was actually an issue that I had with the Hanwei Naginata because the Tsuba was a little rattly. It wasn't quite as tight. So this is definitely nice to see on this one. Otherwise, um, as far as durability is concerned, now there is always a certain issue with such a fine edge because it does taper all the way from here to the edge. There's not a whole lot of material supporting the edge. So it's easy for it to get damaged. That's a common thing with uh, Japanese grind. And uh, you can see here in the close-up the edge definitely got some damage. I think most of this was from one missed swing that I did, even though it ended up pretty impressive, actually. Oh, unintentional, but not bad. So I've got kind of mixed feelings about that. On the one hand, the way it took out a slice of wood is pretty good. And of course, as that is not what I intended, you know, hacking into wood with a naginata is maybe not the greatest idea even though you can, again, always argue about how sturdy it needs to be because on a battlefield it would hit armor and things like that. It's not exactly soft material either. And bone is neither for that matter. It didn't actually cut very far. It cut about a quarter and broke the rest. It should not get damaged too easily from that. So that makes me worry a little bit about the heat treatment. 
but the good news is it did not bend. I mean, I suppose you could argue that for $90, these faults can be overlooked. It's not that big of a deal. And I suppose you have a point. I just find it a little disappointing. Personally, I'd rather pay, say, $200 or even $300 or perhaps even more for something that's better made. You know, it doesn't fall apart, that's properly fitted everywhere, that is more you know, sturdy wood and thicker, more massive in general, that you don't have to worry about it falling apart, that sort of thing. This, I mean, if you're on a budget and you're planning to just cut, say, water bottles, tatami mats should still be fine, although I'd be a little worried if you cut deliver a powerful cut with bad edge alignment this could be a problem with the steel could bend or you could get edge damage but i mean i guess i can't knock it too much for the price that's really what i'm saying even though you know, it's it's a bit of a shame because i was really looking forward to it i have to say though it handles really nicely you know when i ignore the fact that i'm a little worried about the shaft i mean yeah, the way you can swing this around is uh, really quite nice. The light weight definitely helps. It makes it feel more agile. It's an oval cross section and it fits the hand very well. You can feel the edge alignment perfectly and uh, that definitely helps when using it. So there are certainly things to like about it. You can cut and thrust with it quite easily. It does cut well, of course. I'm not trained in the use of a Naginata, so I'm using it kind of like a, a long sword or a quarter staff, something like that. But um, either way, whether you, you hold it fairly high up or you choke down for more power, this is really maneuverable, handles well, and um, yeah, I really want to like it. That's the thing. You know, there are some definite things that I appreciate about it. You know, mainly the fact that it is a Naginata and it was not to like about it. But um, yeah, if only the fit and finish was a little better and uh, it was made of sturdier material, then it would be pretty damn awesome. As it is, as said, on a budget, I would still recommend it if you're planning to do light cutting. Also, be prepared that the quality control may not be great, so you may be getting something that does not fit as well as this or you know the blade may be mixed up or whatever so if the fit seems very off and you have to force it you may want to contact cult of athena or you know whatever other store that you got it from and ask hey could this perhaps be the wrong blade for this handle things like that so yeah with all these caveats quest in mind. for a high quality and affordable pole arm continues <laughs> i'll keep you updated if I find anything. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you found the review helpful. Mm -hmm.